Hey everybody, welcome back to The Sublimation Life. Today we're gonna hang out in the Cricut Crafting Corner and we're gonna look at how to make these adorable little cardstock Easter eggs for Easter decorations. It's a very easy, simple, and quick process and I'll go ahead and show you the step-by-step -step way of making them and the materials you'll need. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is a cutting machine for your cardstock. I specifically have the Cricut Explore Air 2 is what I use with my design space, but whatever cutting machine works for you is perfect. You'll go ahead and need some crafting glue. This I get at Walmart. You can get wherever you would like as long as it's some kind of crafting glue. And then of course you'll need your choice of colors cardstock. This is the 12 by 12 65 pounds. You'll want 65 pounds or more for the best results. So let's head on over to Cricut Design Space and start the process. New canvas up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my grid on. And then to upload your file, you're gonna go over to the left sidebar here. You'll click Upload. You can see I have some things already inputted here, but you'll go to Upload Image, go to Browse, and then you'll see here, this already has what I'm using. I will go ahead and select this file. It's gonna have all of the templates and all of the pieces for the egg. We'll go ahead and open. And you'll make sure that's highlighted. It is a cut image. And then we'll go over to Upload. You'll wanna click that and then go down over to the right and add to Canvas. And you should see your image pop up right here. You can see that it is all grouped together over here in the layers panel. You'll go up to ungroup, click that, and now you can move them freely and individually. Depending on which design you would like, you can go ahead and get rid of the other parts that are not necessary. So as you can see, the two items that I am going to be using, they are all one item and I don't want this because I want to be able to manipulate my items when I'm cutting them and arranging them on the cutting board. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select one of the items and I want to go in and make individual items. This you can do by going over to your contour button, clicking it and you see that all the pieces are right here. Now if I click, say, this one here where it's highlighted a dark gray, you can see over here it's actually removed the same exact thing that I highlighted or unselected, and that's how you remove parts of your image. Now in this case, I only want to have one of these panels, so I'm going to go over to Hide All Contours, and this is the easy way to hide everything instead of individually selecting it all. We'll go ahead and click that. Now you can see everything is a light gray except for this piece here, and that's always the top layer. It's always going to be the one that doesn't hide. So when you go to unhide something, just make sure you click and hide the thing that you don't want on there. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one and then we'll go through and just hover and highlight everything that you want to keep with that image. You can see some of the times some of the graying doesn't work perfectly. You kind of have to move your mouse to find the hover spots. If you still can't like this little piece here, you'll go over to the right and just scroll down until you find the shape that'll coordinate with that gray spot. It looks like where we're gonna find that piece. You can see that there's several of them, so you're just gonna have to figure out which one correlates to the one that you're needing. So we'll click that, and you can see this one grayed, so we'll unclick that. And now I click that one, and you can see this part came back up, and my whole image over here is together. So go ahead and go back to the top, make sure that first one is unhighlighted, click X and X it out. And now you have the one individual panel that you can manipulate. We need six of them, so the easiest way, because they're all the same, is go ahead and duplicate five more. Okay, so now you can see I have six individual panels that I can move and manipulate freely. I'll go ahead and highlight those 
click the align button and I'll do a center vertically and that just lines everything up for us. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with this one. We're going to do the items that we need. This one will take a few more steps, but it's the exact same process. Now you can see all of our items are individual. We can move them freely and nothing's connected. So you'll be able to manipulate the placement as much as needed. <coughs> you'll now be able to adjust to the height and the width that you want as well. For this specific project, I like to go ahead and line everything up in the center and go ahead and do the align vertically again with all of the items selected. Now we have everything lined up and the reason I like to do this is because now when you go in to resize everything, you can resize everything exactly in ratio and it's going to adjust by the height of the tallest item and everything will come into ratio with that item. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my height to an 11.5 because that's the biggest width that you can cut on a 12 inch mat. Now you can see everything has changed in size. Everything's gone larger and it's still all in the same ratio. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and move into making the cuts. So we'll go up to make it. And it'll automatically go ahead and place your items for you but you can move your items so that nothing gets overlapped and cut on items that aren't supposed to get cut. So I'll go ahead and do that. See, I do have it selected as a 12 by 24 inch mat. I still use the 12 by 12 card stocks, but with this 12 by 24 mat, you can put two of the 12 by 12 card stocks at a time and then it'll cut more images more quickly. All of your items on your mats where you want them, you can go ahead and press continue and go ahead and start your cuts. You will want to make sure that you go to custom dial on your cut machine, go to cardstock intricate cuts and use that cutting setting. All right, as you can see, we have all our pieces cut out. We have the shell, the bases, and then the side inserts. We're gonna start with putting our shell together, then we'll do the bases and then the inserts. So let's go ahead and start on the first step. As you can see, there's three shapes for the outer shell. There's the most outer, the center outer, and then the most inner outer. And all these will do is put inserts into each other. You can see the middle one has two inserts on the top and the bottom. The two outer ones and inner one have one slits on each side. So we'll go ahead and take our center one and the one that has the slits on the inside of the shell. And this is gonna be your most outer one. You'll go ahead and slide the slits together just like so. And just be careful not to tear anything. And they should just lay very well and evenly together. And you'll do the same thing with the inner shell. 
and that one will just slide also right into the middle and same on the bottom. And once you have those together, you can go ahead and fan it out so it looks like a little outer shell for the egg and then you can go ahead and stand it up. The second step is going to be putting our bases on. The larger base will be for the bottom and the smaller base is for the top. These slits here are where these slits insert into. So you just want to be really careful as you're putting your base into the slits, again, that you're not tearing any of the paper. You'll go ahead and fan that back out, slide the base in, and then just gently work your way around, putting each slit where it goes. And that will be your bottom base right there. We'll go ahead and put our top base in. All right, so now you should have an egg shaped shell that looks something like this. From this point, we'll do the third step and that's putting in the side panels. You should have six side panels unless you did a different version of the egg. You can put these in two ways. You can either take the top slit that goes through the top and put it through the top from the underneath and pull it up and then put it into the bottom slot. Just like that. Or you can go ahead and take the top slot here and put it in through the top and then slide it into the bottom slot. And this I feel like just secures it a little bit better, whereas this one, it falls down a little bit easier. As long as you push this in, it stays pretty secured in there. So I'm gonna do it this way for the rest of the panels. Okay, so at this point, you should have your egg fairly put together and it should look something like this at this point. Now, you can see that the panels, they do kind of move around still a little bit. What I like to do is go ahead and glue the bottom of these to the bottom. That way they don't fall out like that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have everything secured into place now on the bottom. You will notice that I also did the top just a little more secure that way. But that is how you do the large Easter eggs for decoration with the cardstock. Once you have it all made, you can definitely put stuff on the inside, whether it's a candle or some flowers, just to give it that little extra something for your Easter decorations. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and boop that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share for others so that they can get helped as well. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting!